Hi everyone, Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com coming at you with 2023 Bowman Baseball Jumbo Edition 8 box pick your team number 10. Full case of jumbo, all card ship except for paper vets and non first prospects. And I'll, I'll show you an example, but all other paper will, will ship, numbered paper will ship, like Bowman first paper will ship, rookie card paper will ship, obviously numbered paper will ship, um, all chrome ships, and obviously all autographs and all, you know, all that shit. Obviously. Pretty straightforward. All right. Big thanks, everybody, here for getting in on the action. Scott, Last Bond Mojo, Diamondbacks. Now, if you got Bowman Jumbo 9 next to your name, that means you won that spot in the filler that we did just a few moments ago. Did I upload that video for, for full disclosure and posterity? Yes, I did. All right, and there's the full case right there. Thanks, everybody, for making this happen. I appreciate it. And this will be the uh, this is the last break of the night as well. We are all booked up, but personal breaks available at Jazz Visa Breaks on Instagram Live. Scott, well, Scotty Scoot, in the chat. He's got a lot of teams. He's got the Diamondbacks with Last Bot Mojo, Drew Jones hunting. He's got the Braves, he's got the White Sox, he has the Royals, he has the Pirates, Cardinals, and Rangers. A wide variety of teams. So he, I think he got the uh, the Diamondbacks were the big team he got straight up. I think all the other teams he won in the filler. Yeah, I think almost all every team except for the Diamondbacks came out of the filler. Obviously, with the Diamondbacks being purchased straight up, I think he was he went a little big on the filler. I think he was eager to see. This break happened before the night was out. Now my Lakers, they got smoked tonight by the uh, by the Golden State Warriors. They won Game One, they lost Game Two. You know what's gonna happen? That zigzagging's gonna gonna happen a bit. Uh, what happened in the baseball world? Alex Calls walk off homer gives the Nationals a 4 3 win over the Cubs. Nationals beat the Cubs 4 2 3. Justin Verlander gives up two home runs in his in a, in Tigers 2 0 win over the Mets. Mets got three hit by the Tigers. Tigers beat him 2 0. Zach Eflin goes a masterful seven innings. Rays sweep the Pirates. Rays beat the Pirates 3-2. to two. I think this was the game where the umps had Eflin take off his, his wedding ring, which was really a, just a, one of those rubber wedding rings that, that you often wear when you're out and about if you don't lose the actual thing. But I think that was on his glove hand. I think he's a righty, isn't he? Very odd. Uh, Luis Rangifo homers and drives in four as the Angels sweep the Cardinals 11 to seven. I'm glad I dropped Luis Rangifo from my fantasy team a couple weeks ago. Angels beat the Cardinals 11 to seven. Orioles blow seven run lead and then rally for a 13 10 win over the Royals. Wow. Orioles win 13 to 10. Twins beat the White Sox seven to three in, in extras. Rockies use five run eighth to surge. Uh, to surge, to sweep over the Brewers. Rockies won 9-6. to six. Trammell, Kirby helped Mariners control sweep versus Athletics. They win 5-3. to three. Uh, Sweep, I don't think they... Did they sweep? And then um, Braves beat the Marlins 6-3. Acuna powering the Braves to 6-3 win over the Marlins. And the Red Sox beat the Blue Jays 11-5. Red Sox win 6th straight and complete a four-game sweep over the Blue Jays. That's your baseball Jaron Duran's hitting 409. Duran Duran. It's good for the hobby.
Yeah, it is, it is good to see Trammell kind of showing up, right? There's Goldie. Purple paper to 250. That'll be for the Redbirds. That's for Scott. Yeah, Perdomo would be a nice pull too for Scott. I know that Drew Jones is definitely the main chase there, but I don't think, I think any other hits would be nice too. There's Yainer Fernandez, purple paper to 250 for the Dodgers. That'll be for Mark. There's Xavier Isaac, Aqua Lunar to 125 for the Rays. That's going to be for Oren. Got the Rays straight up. And there's a Colin Palouse, 53 out of 499 refractor autograph for Chad and the A's. Got the A's in the filler. There's a Justin Crawford paper, Neil with the Phillies, Carl Crawford's kid, Neil. There's Johanel uh, Aponte for the Blue Jays, Neil, with the Blue Jays as well. He's heating up. Edouard Julian is another, another guy we're looking for, another person we're chasing here. Stephen Carney with the Twins. Maybe we'll find some numbered stuff of his. Autographs, perhaps. I'll tell you what, we haven't seen a Super Fractor yet out of here, so... Be cool to see a super, a super of a future super estrella. There's Jorge Burgos, Burgos, 83 out of 250 purple chrome autograph for Jordan. Cleveland, this is for you. Cam Collier is a guy we're looking for as well. And Spencer Jones. Mark has the uh, Spencer Jones, has the Yankees, and Mark, Mark N has the Yankees, Mark B has the Reds. Or I can go Mark with a K and Mark with a C, that works too. And there's a Drew Jones Purple Chrome, 83 out of 250. This is start, start Scott. Scott with Last Spot Mojo. All of these add up. Your second overall pick. Andrew Jones's kid, as everyone knows. And a Drew Drones Jones Chrome. And we got the Wells Fargo Championship on the background, golf fans. A designated event. I think it's a designated event. Yeah, maybe a sign of things to come, Scott. Let's 
going on? Uh, what's going on tomorrow in the baseball world? We got a early game on MLB Network. Marlins at Cubs. Edward Cabrera versus Justin Steele. I got Justin Steele on my fantasy team. He's been he's been playing some good baseball. <laughs> this first box better than the Mets have been looking out. A little bit of the uh, early April blues for the for the Mets. Toronto's at Pittsburgh. Chicago is at Cincinnati. That's the that's an Apple TV game. Yankees are in Tampa Bay. That should be a good matchup. Boston's at Philadelphia. Colorado's in uh, Colorado's in uh, in Queens, in New York, playing the Mets. Twins at Cleveland. That's an Apple TV game. Baltimore at Atlanta. Oakland is in Kansas City. Detroit's in St. Louis. The Rangers are in Ann, uh, with the Angels. The Nationals are at Arizona. Dodgers are in San Diego. That's going to be a good series. Houston's at Seattle, ESPN Plus game. And Milwaukee's at San Francisco. That's your late game. Really? Your parents met because the Mets... We're in and won the 86 World Series. Tell us the story. One was a ball boy for the Mets. The other was a ball girl for whoever the Mets played in 86. There were enemies on the field, but love at first sight. They had mutual friends bail on a Billy Joel concert to go see the game. And so they ended up going to the concert together. And then love. And then, and then Scott. Aqua Shimmer Henry Ramos to 125. That is for the Royals. That's for Scott. Spencer Jones Chrome will be for Mark. Eric Houston would have opted out of Billy Joel. You might have opted out of love. There's Ruben Santana at a 299. Maybe if it happened the other way, maybe if they all went to the Billy Joel concert and they never would have fallen in love and then we wouldn't have Scott buying the Diamondbacks in this group break. There's Leandro Arias for the Orioles. That's for David. David with the O's. Refractor autograph. I guess that's what they call in the uh, in the industry. Uh, I don't know what industry. Uh, a a meat cute. I think you see these, I don't know where that phrase is coined. I want to say it's from maybe a, maybe like Korean, like romantic comedy miniseries is, or maybe not. It's usually like a, an impossibly cute meeting of people. There's Ben Brown for the Cubs. That's for EA Sports. It's in the game.
We got a green grass, Tamar Johnson, to two out of 99. Pirates, that's for Scott. It's one of their big up and coming prospects, too. Fourth overall pick. And we got Tommy Specht, 009 out of 150. Big use of the canvas here. That will be for Scott and the Rangers. Tristan Houses. Uh, Justin Crawford. Edward Julian. Has anyone been to the World Golf Hall of Fame? I think it's in Florida. Stephen Carney with the Twins. And that's Neil with the Phillies. Obviously, we'll do an autograph recap at the end. Next box. Anyone uh, in the break besides Scott in the chat? I don't think so. I think it's just Scott. If Scott wasn't here, I probably would have just passed, passed the buck, passed the break to Jason tomorrow. No one would have noticed, except for Scott. Scott would have noticed. And he'd have been like, come on, man. You're here, Eric. You're here, that's good. I got it, we got it, we got a little audience. Anyone else here besides Eric and Scott? Say hello. Okay, I try, Eric. I try my best. No. All right, Glock is in here. Nick's here. All right, good. Now we got some people. Thanks for hanging out. Yeah, let's get a Drew Jones auto. Let's speak that into existence. Would they would most would most breakers bail on a break like this? An hour an hour plus break? Late at night? I don't know. I mean, usually I'm breaking while other breakers are breaks. I don't know what goes on in the world anymore. There's a lot of new faces in the breaking industry that every time we go to like the national, we're just like, oh yeah, there's some new guys here. There's Eduardo Julian. Nice. One, two, two out of 150. Blue Shimmer for the Twins. That's for Stephen Carney. Yeah, and we're like, who are these guys? Who are these new guys? <laughs> we've, we've, been, we've been doing this for like, what? How long have we been doing this? Eight and a half? Going on nine years maybe? Ten years? Nine years? So we, and like, I mean, we know like Leighton, we say hi to him when we go to big national events. And then we're like, Rich, who are these guys? I don't know. We talk to the Mojo guys, and they're like, who are all these new faces here? I'm like, we don't know. You're younger and louder. I guess that plays. There's Daniel uh, Gilarte, 250, purple paper. That's for the Brewers, that's for Mark Bissett.
I admire the energy. I don't know how they keep that energy up. For I actually don't know how long, how long they break. Maybe they got a team of people cycling through like breaks throughout the evening. There's Braylon Tavera, 285 out of 499 refractor autograph for David and the O's. They've got that. Uh, they've got that like like Twitch gamer energy. Where they can they can just, they can just hang out for like 12, 14 hours at a time. There's Manuel Beltre. Oh, is it? Hmm. So it's not just youthful energy, it's just it's just cocaine energy? Hmm. There's Ricardo Perez to one ninety nine. I don't know. Not a... Not into doing drugs on the job, Eric Houston. It's like this little powdery stuff it might be from the machine that was cutting. It looks like excess paper. And we got a Angel Janao, atomic autograph to 100. Wouldn't wouldn't using uh, using a substance such as an upper such as that, Eric? Wouldn't that isn't that like using PEDs? <laughs> it's like ball players doing greenies back in the eighties. Little speed. Uh, Scott is saying, what do you think the least exciting one of one of super fractured to pull would be? I mean, all supers are exciting, but. Uh, the least exciting one would probably be like Hmm. It would be like I guess like Mets Justin Verlander. Right? right? Or you're like, yeah, cool, I guess, but it's not like a rookie, it's not because we're doing Bowman, you know what I mean? So it's not like we're looking for prospects. We're looking in, in here. So to get like a vet a vet Pitcher, <laughs> one of one might not be terribly exciting. I mean, it'd be cool. I'm sure it'll sell well, but I mean, maybe maybe Verlander's a bad example. But yeah, I guess Verlander. Yeah, I mean, Verlander's a bad example. He's like he's like HOF. So maybe having a one of one is still fine. Um, but it'd be something like that. Maybe like. I don't know, like, like Chris Taylor for the Dodgers or something. <laughs> or like, you know the guy, you know, and he's all right. He's one of one, cool. No disrespect to Chris Taylor if he's listening. Yeah, like a Liazmani Grandal one of one. Like, it's cool that it's a one of one, but you're kind of wishing it was a... It's like a prospect or something. Like that. Yeah, is Taylor Trammell hot right now? I think Taylor Trammell put the M's up on top with a two-run dinger. That's good for the hobby, Taylor Trammell. Trammell?
Well, he, he's hitting 250 right now. That's not, that's not that bad. He was a, yeah, he was a Reds pros prospect, right? Oh, he only has eight at bats. I was gonna say, I think, I think he was batting like one seventy something yesterday. So a couple hits, that's gonna, that's gonna jack up the average and the, uh, and the, the OPS. Yeah, he was with the, uh, a tops pro. He was picked thirty fifth overall by the Reds in the twenty sixteen baseball draft. Where was he traded? Reds traded Trammell to the Padres in a three-team trade where the Reds got Trevor Bauer, Indians got Yasiel Puig, Scott Moss, Framil Reyes, Logan Allen, Victor Nova, and the Padres assigned Trammell to the Amarillo Sod Poodles of the Double A. That's, that's July 2019. Then a year later, August 30th, the Padres traded Trammell, Ty France, Andres Munoz, Luis Torrens to the Mariners for Austin Nola, Dan uh, Altavia, and Austin Adams. Zach Nito, he got called up to four ninety nine. Dylan Dingler, six home, six home runs in six straight games. Detroit prospect. That's pretty good. And we've got uh, Dernish Valdez, Cubs. EA with the Cubs. I think Matt Mervis is in here somewhere. Our resident Cubs fan Rex was saying that Got called up. He's going to make his debut tomorrow. We got a sky blue 499 Trey Turner. I need him to heat up for my fantasy baseball team. Come on, Trey. Let's go. Trey Turner's only hitting 259. Five doubles, couple triples, a few home runs. He only has eight RBIs. Even four hitting towards the top of that lineup. 35 Ks, that's not good. To eight walks and four stolen bases. Come on, Trey Uh, you did not, Chad. I wish I could say you did, but you did not miss a super. I wish you did, though. I wish I could say, yeah. Ooh, look at this. Is this? It's an auto. Edward Julien. Edouard Julien. Quebec. From Montreal. I don't know if he's from Montreal. No, he's from Quebec City. 
Speckle autograph, 77 out of 299. That's going to be for the Twinkies. Stephen Carney with the Twins. Your number 10 Twins prospect. I like that. You like that? You like that? There's Mikey Romero to 299. Speckle for the Red Sox. That'll be for Ryan. Think that Julian's a PSA 10 block board? That'd be awesome. Drew Jones paper for Scott in the Diamondbacks. And we've got a Luis Garcia, 102 out of 250, purple chrome autograph for Neil and the Blue Jays. How did my Raiders do in the draft? That's a great question, Chad Cromwell. Let's take a look. Let's recap the Raiders. I thought they did okay. I think the, the the draft grades were, were were all right. I think after years of having some pretty piss poor drafts with with Gruden and Mayock and even the Reggie McKenzie years, I mean the Raiders have just been spread thin. Every time there was an injury, there was really no depth. I mean the draft, yeah, you're looking for starters in the draft, but you're also looking for some some solid bench players as well, rotational guys. Guys that can keep starters fresh, you know. So they've just, you know, like you look at some of the old stats. There's like stats of like how many Raiders from the 2019 draft are still on the team, you know. Not not very many, <laughs> if at all, which is kind of crazy. I feel like most teams you'll look at and be like, yeah, it's still like, you know, four players from that draft, you know, occupying some solid positions for their respective teams, but... Now, the Raiders' first pick was Tyree Wilson, the defensive end from Texas Tech. I like that. That gives uh, – excuse me. That um, gives uh, Max Crosby some help. That gives Chandler Jones some help. Yeah, did they get an overall grade of B plus? Yeah, not bad. Yeah, I think it's pretty solid. Usually every year that someone will be like, "Wow, that was a crazy reach for this guy," but no, I think I think all the picks were were well thought out and well placed. If the Raiders could have like one or two more drafts like this, plus a free agent window, get a get a you know find a quarterback post Jimmy Garoppolo, you know once they do that, you know they might have some might have some solid depth and be be fun to watch. They got Michael Mayer, the tight end from Notre Dame, who is a great all-around tight end. He can block, he can catch, he can do all the dirty work stuff, and still go out and, and catch a pass. Josh McDaniels knows how to deploy a tight end. They needed a Darren Waller replacement and Foster Moreau plays. And they also have Austin Hooper and O.J. Howard on that team, so that's a good tight end room there too. Uh, they got Byron Young, the uh, Alabama Byron Young. I think there's like, like a Florida State Byron Young or something like that. But they got Alabama defensive tackle Byron Young, big guy, run stuffer. You know, that, that dude's good. I guess the sort of, this was their second 
pick in the third round. They they got this sort of undersized receiver, Trey Tucker from Cincinnati. But I think he's just he's a he's kind of a shorter guy, but he's fast. I think he can fly. He's got like a four three forty or something crazy like that. So that could be early years special teams guy, maybe develop into a sort of stretch the field kind of guy. There's a Marion Boyd to 199. For the Phillies, that'll be for Neil. Here's Edward Julian for the Twins, Stephen Carney. And they got uh, Jacorian Bennett, Maryland corner. Raiders need improvement on the secondary. They got Aiden O'Connell with the second pick in the fourth from Purdue. That's a development project. I think he's got his ceiling is a really solid backup, which is something that the Raiders need anyway. You know, maybe develops into something more. Maybe a Brock Purdy situation happens out there, but some good development pieces. Christopher Smith, the second safety out of Georgia with a fifth round compensatory pick. Thought that was a great pickup. I think another sort of undersized guy in the secondary, but someone who has a lot of ups on, from a great defensive program. I think Bennett's like that too. Bennett's also kind of smaller, but good ball hawk, can defend the ball well kind of guy. Makes up for what they lack for in size. Sixth round, Amari Bernie, a linebacker from Florida. And then a Nesta Jade Silvera defensive tackle from Arizona State, who is, from what I understand, a big dude, but a very raw prospect, may need some years to marinate. Here's Justin Crawford, Bowman Scouts Top 100, number 92, 74 out of 125. So that's the Raiders right there. So they, they did what they needed to do. They, they got a replacement tight end. They got a backup quarterback to develop maybe into something. Edwin Arroyo, you know, they replaced the Darren Waller spot. One thing they didn't do... Uh, was uh, they did not get a... the Edwin Arroyo, by the way, goes to Mark Bissett and the Reds. One thing they didn't do was get an offensive lineman. A lot of people thought they were going to go offensive line in the draft, but I think they got a couple of guys um, from the undrafted market who might be able to fight for a rotational job or something like that. Drew numbered? No, not yet, Eric. Cam Collier... So they got guys that can hopefully chase around uh, the quarterbacks in the AFC West. And then that defense was just really – the offensive wasn't as bad as people thought. Even the offensive line performed above expectations. Even if they regress a little bit, I think they'll still be okay. But that, off, that defense has got to kind of get to – here's Gabriel Gonzalez for Seattle. Mark Bissett with the Mariners. But they got to get that defense just even to league average, and they might be more competitive in games. Um, yeah, I like Jimmy G, but I don't like his injury history. So hopefully he stays healthy. I mean, I'm kind of taking a glance at the Raiders' last season, and I know this goes for a lot of teams. A lot of teams, you know, it's just the way the NFL is. We'll lose by a score or two, but... Ooh, nice Cam Collier. Bowman first autograph for the Reds. Mark Bissett. Eighteenth overall pick. <laughs> Thanks, Eric. No, it's all good. You guys d dug deep to fill it up. This is still, it's still within my regular parameters. You're almost done too. I th it also helps if I have some company in the chat. And then the break doesn't feel so long at all. I don't know, there, there are how many games, what, five or six games last year for the Raiders where they were leading 
at the half. I mean, man, this is giving PTSD thinking about this. I think the Raiders may have set some sort of record where the most games lost after leading by like 20 plus points at the half or something crazy like that. I think there were like three or four games they were, they were up by at least two touchdowns or more. Games that they ended up just pissing away in the second half. That's due to a lottery. Actually, it's not just the defense. There was some, there was some, some playing not to lose play calling, if you know what I mean, which, which in the NFL, y- y- you can't do. I feel like in most sports, you can't play to just not lose. You know, so there was a little bit of that, some questionable play calling on the offensive side towards the end of the game, and then just the defense just not being able to, to put together four quarters um, and, and letting the game slip away. Kind of crazy. Like, you look at some of the first half, second half stats where it would just be like Raiders first half, they're up like 21-7 or something like that, and they lose like 30-something to 24 or something crazy, and it's just it's extremely frustrating. Onwards, yeah. Well, I hope there's a super fracture lingering for Scott as well. Eric, that would be nice. I don't know. I'm just looking at the schedule again. If you know, if Rage could turn some of those close, close losses into W's. That would be uh, that would be nice. Maybe sneak into a playoff spot. Chad's concern is the coach. You're a New England fan, but we've seen his work in Denver. Not so sure about that guy and his decision making. But he doesn't lack. Oh, no, he does not lack confidence at all. I I am no apologist for Josh McDaniels at all. However, I do give him a little leash. You know, what was it, 10 years since that Denver, Denver, since the Denver days? I'd like to think that in 10 years that, you know, that people can, especially at his age, can mature and change. You know, so we'll see. I think when he took the Denver job, he was in his early 30s. Mid 30s, early 30s. Now he's 47, just turned 47. He's almost 50 now. So like, I would hope that, you know, think about yourself. I don't know how old everyone is, but, you know, just think of yourself at yourself just now and then minus 10 or 15 years and see how you were then. Hopefully, you have made some, uh, become more, more mature in that period of time. Or at least more professional in your work life or something like that. Did it, Glock? Not here. We did not get that here. But did that happen elsewhere in the world? But all that being said, I think this might this is probably Josh McDaniels' last serious chance at a head coaching job. So there's Juan Chacon, 34 out of 399, green paper for the Red Sox. That'll be for Ryan.
because I think he's being given every opportunity to succeed, you know, as a head coach for the Raiders. He's getting paid a lot. He's got the confidence of the ownership. He's been giving a, given a long leash, you know. He's been given the opportunity to, to pretty much rebuild the team. You know, he's with his buddy, Dave Ziegler from the New England days, as the GM. So they're a package deal. So, I mean, it's not... It's not like the Raiders coached, uh, bought, got this coach, hired this coach and GM, and are not giving them the tools to succeed. You know, they're in a bright, shiny new stadium, very passionate fan base. So now it's up to them, really. There's Blaine Krim, speckle autograph. Right. I mean, this is the crossroads, Scott. Like, it, we'll see. Is Josh McDaniels gonna gonna develop into a good head coach? Or is he just a good coordinator? And so you're right, some coaches are just better coordinators. It's Gavin Cross to 399. Lava. I mean, look at uh, like Norv Turner, Wade Phillips, you know. All right, Josh was the only coach that could win or work with Tebow. 8 0 to start the season. Yeah, I mean, we got to catch more of more of that, more of that version of Josh McDaniels. We got Vinny Pascatino, magenta paper to 299. That will be for Kansas City. That will be for Scott. Trey Sweeney refractor to 499. Mark. And we've got we got Juan Alonso. That will be for Mark Bissett and my Dodgers. Yeah, you're thinking now is that Josh was the coordinator, but instead it was all Brady on offense. Bill had the defense. Your Raiders have to reach the should have no excuses, especially with that running back. Yeah. Well. Yeah. There's Gabriel Martinez, 75. There's some. I mean, Josh Jacobs ended up with. You know a. Uh, you know the the rushing yard title last year but it took a number of games for that offense for for josh and we had to figure it out maybe it was a trust thing maybe he just didn't trust josh jacobs or his durability or whatever and was really cautious with him but they really didn't lean into him until a handful of games into the season but there were there were a lot of times when again like with the lead they were they were throwing the ball with the lead instead of just running, pounding the rock, running out some clock, you know. Second and short situations, they're, 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 they're passing. You know, then it's third and, you know, then it's third and short. And they get stuffed on a run and, or something like that. And, or they're passing on third and short, something crazy. Like, and then you're just like, what are we doing here? Why are we passing on third and short when we got like Josh Jacobs and that Georgia running back, Zamir White? You telling me one of those guys can't stumble ahead for a couple yards? And even then the passes would be like shots down the field. It'd be like, I don't know, 10, 15 yard outs. Complicated route, you know? It wasn't like it was a spider two eye banana or anything like that. And you're like, what are we doing here? <laughs> With the lead. All 
All right, two boxes to go. Josh might be as bad as this break is for open. My, well, just like the career of Josh McDaniels, this break is not over yet, Chet. Still two boxes to go. As coach would always tell me, play to the whistle. Yeah, well, the Patriots, I don't know what the Patriots are doing. They, who were their offensive coordinators last year? Did they even announce an offensive coordinator? Was Matt Patricia calling offensive plays? You know, and then you got Mac Jones, like, recruiting other offensive coordinators that pissed off Coach Belichick. You know, like... Uh, <laughs> that was just a bit of a mess. I think it was Matt Patricia and then someone else. They had like, no one was officially the offensive coordinator, but Patricia and someone else was like handling offensive leadership duties or whatever, however they call it, whatever coach speak there was. But now I think they got a proper offensive coordinator. So hopefully, you know, they'll try a more conventional way. We got a purple lunar, Vincent Perozo to 199 for the Metropolitans. That'll be for Neil. Oh, and we got a Drew Jones, Bowman Scouts top 100 insert for Scott. We got Lazaro Montes to 399 green paper for the Mariners. That'll be for Mark. It's Edward Julien for the Twins, Chrome. Oh, that game, I remember. Yeah, it was Jacoby Myers who threw the ball backwards in the fourth quarter as a lateral. Picked off, I think it went back to the quarterback, right? And then Chandler Jones came in, scooped up the ball, and then stiff-armed Mac Jones to the ground, and then walked it off with the touchdown. There's Nerwillian Cedeno. For Tristan and the Padres. I need to find a uh, a. Uh, there's a great photo of it. There's a photo with a great angle of Chandler Jones stiff arming poor little Mac Jones to the ground while running over him for a touchdown. Here's Jefferson Rojas for EA and the Cubs. If that ever turns into an autographed football card or something like that. You, told, you said that's it? You told your son Meyer's gone and he's gone now? Do you know where he is now? Guess where he is now.
Jacoby Myers signed a one-year deal with the Raiders. I'm sure there'll be a lot of good-natured joking in the locker room from uh, Chandler Jones once they see each other during camp. You'll probably never make that play again. I thought I felt a plate on the on the back of my hand for a second. Yeah. Well, I mean, he Jacoby Myers has some. He's got some skills the the Raiders can use. Let's. Let's see. They got Devonte Adams and Myers and Hunter Renfro. There's Jay Savina to 150 for Mark and the Brewers. If they can find like a real solid wide receiver three or four or something like that, I think uh, I think Jacoby Myers can be that guy. One of those guys can be that guy. The Raiders wide receiver room is pretty crowded. I know someone's going to emerge there. They re-signed Keelan Cole. I think Philip Dorsett's on the team. Plus the, the receiver they drafted. And There's Michelle Dessen. 150 to 250. Purple Ray Wave for David and the Orioles. Last box. Got about 10 or 15 more minutes to go. We'll do a quick little recap at the end of this box as well. Yeah, Renfro had a weird season last year, Scott. I think he got he got a uh, concussion that kind of that knocked him out for a couple weeks and then a couple other little injuries here and there. And I just think he never really got you know, got the season into gear. You know, I think he was like still stuck in first or second gear, never really got out of there. There's been some rumors that, that he's fallen out of favor with Josh McDaniels. I mean, Josh McDaniels doesn't like the entire team that he inherited, and he might just, might end up trading Hunter Renfro, but, and I think that guy deserves, I don't think he should be traded. <laughs> He's a tough dude, you know. He could be that sort of, you know, that sort of white receiver that Josh McDaniels has had in, in his past. He could be an Edelman, Welker type of player. You know, sort of fearless over the middle. Great hands. Third and Renfro was his nickname, you know. The third down, you can always count on Renfro getting open and catching that pass. Making the play, getting the first down, so... So we'll see. Hopefully he's healthy this year and gets off to a hearts hot start because Raiders need him. What's going to happen with Alvin Kamara? Is he going to be able to play? What, are, what happened with the Eagle? Uh, legal issue? Yeah. There's some damning video evidence of him getting in a fight in Vegas and stomping on some dude. I, my guess is that that whatever happens legally, whether he's cleared or not, you know, I think there's a multiple game suspension that's going to happen. Like almost automatically, just with just with the video evidence alone, they'll just be like three, four, five game suspension just like that. There's Marion Boyd to uh, uh, Marion Boyd to 125 blue paper. So knowing knowing the NFL, I feel like that's going to be that's going to be a given. Whether he actually gets 
I mean, do do pro athletes get convicted of anything anymore? <laughs> There's Martin Gonzalez to four ninety nine. No, it was not a domestic violence situation. He was not striking a woman, which may actually help him. I think it was just a fight at a bar or at a, or a club in Vegas or something like that. Like him and his entourage. I think some drunk dude probably came up to him and, you know, stuck a finger in his face or something like that and was being stupid and drunk. And I'm sure Kamara's crew was being stupid and drunk and overly aggressive and started pushing the guy around. That guy naturally probably fought back. And then, you know, Kamara's got an entourage, so they're... They're probably beating him up, and then Kamara thinks he has he has to look like a tough guy because he doesn't want to be, you know, God forbid someone calls him a B for not striking another man while he's down, but, you know, he, and he got in on the action, and then I was on videotape, and that's, that's what, I mean, I, I had no interest in really looking deep into it, but I think that's the, that's the gist of it. Yeah, well, Derek Carr could use Alvin Kamara's services, that's for sure. So they better not lose him for too much. Didn't the Saints draft a running back, or did they not? I think that's a good fit for Derek Carr, by the way. I think Derek Carr was sort of unceremoniously, you know, dumped, essentially, at the end of the season. Kind of, I understand why they did it. I don't know. I think they could have handled that a little bit better for a quarterback that's been not missed a lot of regular season games and was with the Raiders organization for almost a decade. I feel like he deserved a little bit more than that, but it is what it is. But I think the Saints are a good landing spot for him. They've got some good wide receivers there, right? They got Olave, they got Michael Thomas. Here's Nelson Rada to 499. I feel like they have a decent offensive line, a decent defense. Derek Carr gets to play indoors most of the time. He's sort of known not to be, struggles a little bit in cold weather situations. So he's indoors. He's with, uh, he's with the former Raiders head coach, Dennis Allen. So there's familiarity there already. Familiarity, trust professional understanding of each other. So I think all that should really help. Yeah, I don't know if uh, I don't know if there's any bad blood between between uh, between the Raiders the between the Raiders and Derek Carr, but I think definitely between Derek Carr and, and Josh McDaniels and Dave Ziegler, I'm sure. There's Frederick Ben Cosme to 125, Aqua Shimmer. By all, by all accounts, Mark Davis has spoken then and now spoken glow, glowingly of Derek Carr. Um, I don't think it was the owner decision. I think he, the owner was just letting his GM and coach you know, run the team. So, I don't, I don't know. Post Derek Carr retirement, as long as Josh McDaniels and Dave Ziegler are there, I'm not sure if he's going to be willingly coming back to uh, to uh, Raiders events. Here's Blue Paper Trey Turner and Junior Caminero for the Rays. That's going to be for Oren. I think after, I think after. Uh, after Dave Ziegler and Josh McDaniels are gone, I'm sure he'll show up for Raiders defense. You think the Giants made a big mistake letting Tony go, Kadarius Tony? You think he's going to have Tyreek Hill-like stats? I always, I, dr I actually drafted Kadarius Tony for a couple of years in like fantasy leagues because if you remember him 
and I don't watch too much college, but I remember coming out of college, Florida, I think, that he was, um, that he was like just an amazing player, just incredibly physically gifted and a really talented receiver that just didn't work out with the Giants, whether it was his fault or whether they couldn't get the best out of him. I don't know. That remains to be seen, but we'll see under Andy Reid, a full season with him. There's Spencer Jones right there. Right, well, I mean, I think Ursay did have more of an influence on the team, so I think that's why their relationship is not good with Ursay and Peyton. But I think, I think the difference is, I think Carr does have a decent relationship with, uh, with Mark Davis, so I think it's really the coaches and GMs I think he might not be happy with. I don't know, we'll see. Here's the recap. That was the break, ladies and gentlemen. Nothing too crazy here. The nice, there was a nice Cam Collier, some good color. I guess we did get some nice stuff. Edward Julian. Got some Drew Jones colored, 250. Wish there was some ink there, but not this time. We'll try next time. Hey, thanks everyone for watching. Thanks everyone for keeping me company throughout this long break. 2023 Bowman Baseball Jumbo 8 box. Pick your team 10 in the books. I'm Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com. And I'll see you next time for the next one. Bye-bye.